Okay, we've spoken about the marginal rate of substitution being defined as the negative of the slope of the indifference curves or the ratio of the marginal utilities. Okay, so let's think about what this looks like with an actual functional form. And the functional form we're going to talk about is the Cobb-Douglas utility function. So, when we think about this, we want to look at a Cobb-Douglas utility function. The Cobb-Douglas utility function takes the two arguments, x and y, and it raises x to the power alpha and y to the power 1 minus alpha. Okay, so here, what we also remind ourselves of, alpha, but 0 less than alpha, less than 1. Okay, we could make those weak if we wanted to. Okay, so 0 less than or equal to alpha is less than or equal to 1. So what does that mean? Each of them is raised to a fraction or to a decimal. So x is raised to some decimal, y is raised to some decimal less than um, 1. Okay, so the size of alpha, which is a positive number less than 1, is a kind of baseline measure of how much the individual values x independently of how much x and y she has. Okay, so it's kind of to do with this, the relative strength of your preference for the two goods. So um, we could think about... Um, considering the two goods that you like, if alpha is pretty large, what does that mean? Um, X is raised to a larger number, relatively speaking, than it is to Y, because Y is equal to 1 minus alpha. Um, or we can think about an alternative where alpha is small, and then the power um, that X is raised to is not that large. So here is Keiko's Cobb-Douglas utility function. X raised to the power 0 0.3, and Y raised to the power 0 0.7. Why? Um, what does this mean here? Well, we've got um, X raised to the alpha, alpha is equal to 0 0.3, 1 minus 0 0.3 means that y is raised to the power 0 0.7. Okay, so then we think about this, the relative strength of her preferences um, is a kind of baseline measure of how much um, she is preferring these two things. So um, she likes them both, um, uh, they're both things that give her positive margin utility, but what we're going to see here is that um, y is valued a little bit more relatively speaking than x is. Okay, so when a person's preferences are described by this kind of Cobb-Douglas utility function, then as long as Keiko has sum of each good, so x greater than 0 and y greater than, is greater than 0, then her utility um, is going to be positive. So as long as she has sum of each good, her utility is going to be positive. And um, her utility increases as she consumes more of either good x or y, meaning that the marginal utility of both her goods is positive. Right? So she likes both x and y, um, her consuming either more x or more y is going to add to her utility. Both goods have positive marginal utility. Now what we want to think about is how we go about finding her marginal rate of substitution. To do that, we're going to have to find her marginal utilities. So, let's write out her Cobb-Douglas utility function. We know that u x y is equal to x raised to the power 0 0.3, y raised to the power 0 0.7. Now remember, our definition for the marginal rate of substitution, her MRS, that's equal to the marginal utility of X over the marginal utility of Y. So let's find those two things. Now remember, the marginal utility of X, U sub X, is equal to the partial derivative of, of her utility function with respect to X. Now, what is that equal to? We're going to just apply the power rule here. We partially differentiate her utility function with respect to X. So that gives us 0 0.3, bringing down the power, multiplied by x, and then what do we do? We raise that to the power, 0 0.3 minus 1, and then we have y, what is there? This is treating it like a constant. That's equal to y to the 0 0.7. Now notice here, what is 0 0.3 minus 1 equal to? That's equal to minus 0 0.7. And so her marginal utility of x is 0 0.3 x to the minus 0 0.7 times y to the power 0 0.7. That's her marginal utility of x. What is her marginal utility of y? u sub y is equal to partial utility of u with respect to y. That's equal to bringing down the power of y, 0 0.7, multiplied by what? x to the 0 0.3. We're treating x like a constant. And then what has happened to y? y, we've got 0 0.7 minus 1. Okay, because we've got to subtract 1 when we're differentiating the function partially. So y raised to the power 0 0.7 minus 1, what's that? That's minus 0 0.3. So this means that her marginal utility of y is 0 0.7, x to the 0 0.3, y to the minus 0 0.3. Okay, so here we've got the two marginal utilities. So we know that the marginal rate of substitution is equal to u subscript x over u subscript y, or the ratio of the two marginal utilities. That's 0 0.3. Um, x to the minus 0 
y to the 0 0.7 over 0 0.7 x to the 0 0.3 y to the minus 0 0.3. Now here's something I want to remind you of. When we have a negative power, what does that mean? It means, for example, when I've got x to the minus 0 0.7, that's equal to 1 over x to the 0 0.7. Okay. Similarly, if I have y to the 0, uh, negative 0 0.3, that means I have 1 over y to the 0 0.3. But notice what do we have here? We've got 1 over y to the negative 0 0.3. That's in the denominator. Now, what is that equal to? That's equal to 1 over 1 over y to the 0 0.3. What's that equal to? That's equal to y to the 0 0.3. Now, we're going to use both of those tricks um, over here. So what do we have to do? Well, x to the minus 0 0.7, that's equal to... Um, 1 over x to the 0 0.7. y to the um, um, minus 0 0.3, that's equal to 1 over y to the 0 0.3. And then 1 over y to the 0 0.3, that's equal to 1 over 1 over y to the 0 0.3, as we saw in the side note there. So let's write these out. What are we going to have? We're going to have 0 0.3 times y to the 0 0.7 times y to the 0 0.3. We're going to have 0 0.7 times x to the um, 0 0.3 times x to the 0 0.7. Now, what do we do here with the powers? When I've got y to the power 0 0.7 times y to the 0 0.3, what does that leave me with? It leaves me with y. I've just got y raised to the power 0 0.7 plus 0 .03, 0 0.3, sorry. And so that leaves me with 0 0.3 over 0 0.7 times y over x. And that I can also simplify to 3 over 7 times y over x. And that is Keiko's marginal rate of substitution. Let me just move my head to the side. 3 over 7 times y over x. That is Keiko's marginal rate of substitution of... Um, uh, y for x, how much she is willing to pay um, in terms of y for an additional unit of x um, uh, with respect to thinking about getting an additional unit of x. So remember we looked at one point, and at that one point we saw that she had three units of y and two units of x. So that was point f. So at point f she had um, two units of x and three units of y. So how would we know what her marginal rate of substitution is? at that point? Well, we just substitute those values in. Remember, two and there's 2 for x and there's 3 for y. So we'd say MRS um, 2, 3 is equal to 3 over 7 times y over x. What is that? That's um, uh, 3 over 2. So what is that equal to? That's equal to 9 over 14. That is her marginal rate of substitution at that point. Now, if we look at a different point, what are we going to see? Well, we could have looked at a point where she had very little learning, very little y, and lots of x. Remember, we saw that she had, um, say, 16x, I think it was, and um, 1 y. We could substitute those numbers in and we'd see that we'd get 3 over 7 times 16. So that would be a much smaller number and we're seeing once more this possibility for the marginal rate of substitution to change along the indifference curve. We could see at one point it was high and one point it was low.